to this yoga for post-abdominal surgery. This has been requested uh, and this is for when we're at the point where we've been given the okay that we can gently start exercising again. So this could be roughly around the six week mark depending on the surgery, could be less, could be a bit more. The first thing though is to treat yourself with kindness and compassion. If you're returning to the yoga mat and you had a yoga practice pre-surgery, Please don't hold any expectations of what you're going to be able to achieve at the moment. Your body probably feels like an alien at the moment because it will be so weak, sore. Um, by this point you will be recovering, but you won't have the strength, the flexibility that you had pre-surgery. So what I'm trying to say is don't have any preconceived expectations. Allow your body to be as it is today and know that you are nurturing it and helping it on its recovery now. If this is yoga is new to you, then this is a perfect way to start. Um, this will aid your recovery um, and it is suitable for pre-surgery, all levels of yoga, and post-surgery, this is suitable for all levels again. This is a restorative practice, so during times of surgery and illness, our sympathetic, our fight and flight nervous system is really active. We tend to close in on ourselves, which is completely normal, but now we need to open out and we need to stimulate the calming, the parasympathetic nervous system in our body, which will aid in our recovery. These poses are um, to help to gently start to stretch the abdominal area, start to break down any adhesions, help with the scar tissue, but you have to listen to your body. Everybody recovers at a different rate. If you find that a pose causes pain, then that's no good. That's not what, where you need to be today. You skip that pose and the next time you come to the practice, you try again and see where you are. This can be done on the mat, which is where I'm doing it, or in bed, because you may not feel at the moment able to get down to the mat and then get back up. So again, it's all about treating ourselves with loving kindness and compassion. So if you feel ready, join me either on the mat or on the bed. Whether you're on the mat or on the bed, begin in a comfortable seated position. So that can be kneeling or that can be sitting up on a pillow or a block. If you're in bed, still sit up on a pillow into Sukhasana. Easy pose, cross-legged, tall as you can through the center channel, head over heart, heart over pelvis. You will not be drawing up as much as you used to. Thighs, hands on the thighs, either palms down or palms up. Again, whichever's comfortable. Close off the eyes and come into the breath. During this practice, really concentrate on the breath. If it becomes short and shallow, you know you're going too far into the pose. Notice the breath coming in and coming out. Let's begin with the neck release. We'll have got very tight across our shoulders, so left ear lowers to the left shoulder. This may be enough, or you can bring your right left hand up above the right ear, and imagine you're pulling the right ear up. That may be enough, or if you want a little bit more, walk the right fingertips away. So we're really trying to release that upper trapezius muscle. Trying to sit as tall as we can. We'll be holding this for 10 breaths. Be where you are today and it may just be just that the ear is aiming slightly towards the shoulder and you can progress to these later stages with time. Deep breaths. Last inhale, 
exhale gently hold that navel into the spine if your hands fingers will walk away bring them back in bring the left arm the hand down beside you and gently inhale the right arm up now it may not come up very far at all and that may be as far as you can go or you may be able to bring it up further don't expect to be able to go over fully into the side stretch as you used to do that will come with time if you can straighten your upper arm then lovely if not then let it be where it wants to be and that may be quite bent and that is fine as well you just want to feel a very gentle gentle stretch in that side body so find where you need to be today and be glad to be where you are today you're in your recovery breathing deep inhale exhale bring that arm back down carefully come back up to center gently lower the right ear towards the right shoulder bring the right arm up and place it just above the left ear if you want to if that's enough stay here or you can walk the left fingertips out to the side again to release the upper left trapezius muscle this time breathing deep here we're holding these poses for about 10 breaths so the muscles really get chance to actually release gets into the connective tissue and really stimulates our parasympathetic nervous system these long holds help our body recover inhale exhale bring that left hand back in if it was out to the side place the right hand down carefully inhale the left arm up as far as it wants to go it may not be very far at all and with time you'll start to come over into your side stretch again but do not try too far too soon the top arm may be very bent at the moment again that is fine you need to find your edge and by edge that's a sort of three to four out of ten no more than a four to five out of ten of stretching sensation and certainly no pain breathing deep keep the mind on the sensations in the body and the breath exhale carefully bring the left arm back down come back up to center now you may want to hold on to your tummy as we transition we're coming on to all fours and again that can be on the bed as well as on the mat and then we're coming down onto our forearms to come into a very gentle sphinx so make sure the elbows are well forward of the shoulders to begin so it's not too much of a stretch and you're thinking chest forward heart is opening and you can bring your elbows as far forward as you need so you just feel a gentle stretch no pain and this may not be a posture that you're ready for yet in which case that is fine go into a child's pose if that feels nicer and breathe for 10 breaths As you return to this practice during your recovery you find that your sphinx will become more sphinx like but don't rush it inhale exhale bow your forehead all the way down 
Take a few breaths here. If you're noticing you're holding any tension, try to release it. Carefully coming back to tabletop, so supporting that spine with the navel coming in slightly. Push up using your arm strength. We're coming down onto our backs. I'm just moving the props ready for when I need them in a moment. Useful to have either blocks or pillows to hand. Come down onto your back and that can be quite a challenge at the moment. Pelvic tilt. On an inhale, flatten the spine into the mat, navel coming in and on an exhale, arching the spine. So this can be a really small movement it doesn't have to be a big movement we're starting to get the abdominal muscles working so on the inhale you flatten the, the lower spine against the mat and on the exhale you arch the lower spine so the pelvis is tilting one way and then the other inhale flatten the spine to the mat Exhale, arch the spine, just gently. If you have a strap to hand or a towel or a bathrobe rope, we're coming into a hamstring stretch. Place a strap around the ball of your foot and extend through that knee. Now, you may find you've got a really bent knee at the moment. Do not worry. With time, your flexibility will return. And if you've never had flexibility, then we will begin to work on it now. Keep the left leg bent. Do not try to straighten that left leg. Now, if getting a strap is just too much effort at the moment, just bring the hands behind the thigh. Breathing here. And with each exhale, you may just be able to straighten that knee a smidge more, but don't force it. Remember the intensity is a four to five out of 10. On an exhale, carefully bend that knee. Remove the strap if you're using one. Switch it round to the other foot and extend that left foot up so it's parallel to the ceiling, knee bent as generously as it needs to be, keep that right knee bent and you can, if you haven't got a strap, you can be holding on behind the thigh. Keep breathing. On an exhale, carefully bend that knee. Remove the strap if you're using one and place the foot back down. All these movements use our core. Now I'm grabbing the pillow. So you can use a block or a pillow for this. On an exhale, carefully if you can, lift your pelvis and place the pillow underneath. Now, if at the moment lifting the pelvis to place the pillow underneath is too much, you can stay flat on your back. But with time, aim to get the pillow or the block under the sacral area so we're in a supported bridge. Breathing here, so we've got a very, very gentle stretch in the abdominal area, very gentle. And with time, and I wouldn't expect it on the first go of doing this, see if you'll be able to straighten your legs. And then, further on, see if you can bring your arms up overhead. So that's really increasing the stretch in your abdomen. Do not go this far if it is painful. 
And if this is the first time you're doing this practice, I would suggest staying with the knees bent and the hands by your side. Exhale, bring that navel in against the spine gently. Lift the right knee up and the left if you can. Now that's working your core. You can keep your knees bent, but see if you can straighten them up. Viparita, vipa, vipariti Karani. Legs up the wall, but we haven't got a wall. Such a good restorative pose. But it is beginning to work our core a bit here. So if it starts to feel too much, bend the knees. And come out of the pose at any point where you think you've reached enough. Exhale, bend the knees, holding that navel into the spine and maybe you want to support your abdomen, bring one foot down followed by the other as you inhale. Carefully lift your pelvis, remove the pillow or the block and come back down onto the mat carefully. Hug one knee in followed by the other gently and you might just want to do the smallest of rocks side to side. You'll know, and that might be too much at the moment. You'll probably find you can't draw your knees in as far as you normally would. You'll still have lots of inflammation in the abdominal area. Place one foot down carefully at a time. Roll onto your side. Bring yourself up. We're coming into supported fish. So, I like to use two pillows here for this so that you don't have to go too far back. Two pillows lengthways. Bring them snug up against your lower back and then gently ease yourself down, knees bent, arms by your side. And this may be where you stay today. Remember, we're just beginning in our recovery. It might feel nice to open the knees Bring the legs into Supta Baddha Konasana, but that again could be too much at this point. Listen to your body. There is nothing wrong with keeping the knees bent. And then as time progresses, you're aiming to straighten your legs. And by time, that could be weeks. So again, you're starting to extend those abdominal muscles. So find where you want to be today and breathe wherever you are. It's a wonderful heart opener as well. On your next exhale, gently bring the navel towards the spine. And if you're on pillows, it's really easy to just roll over to the side so you're not using any abdominal strength trying to get back up. Remove the pillows. And I'm now placing them under the knees. 
which may be a bit too tricky to do straight away, but if you can or if you've got someone nearby who can place them under your knees, come onto your side, then roll onto your back. See, all this wriggling around is really difficult when you've just had abdominal surgery. So if you've got somebody there that can put them under your knees, then do, because that then allows the diaphragm room to move and we're gonna do some diaphragmatic breathing. So on the inhale, feel the belly rise and on the exhale, feel it fall. Place your hand on your belly so you can feel it rising and then feel it falling on the exhale. This is challenging after abdominal surgery, but this is great for, first of all, for the parasympathetic nervous system, it stimulates it. It's great for the lungs and the abdominal muscles. Keep going on the inhale, belly comes up. And on the exhale, belly falls. And this can take practice if you're not used to doing this. So don't be disheartened if you find that at the minute it's really hard to do. Exhale, belly falls. Inhale, belly rises. Exhale, the belly falls. Keep going with your breath. Last belly breath. And then let's come into Shavasana. If you've got your legs up on pillows, leave them there. Arms out to the side, palms up, close off the eyes. Let the breathing just return to normal. Now I'm going to leave you here in Shavasana because you may be a bit worn out now and need a nap, in which case you're in the perfect spot to do it. When you are ready to come out of it, roll gently onto your side to help you to come up. There won't be any outro music, so that if you do start to drift, nothing will disturb you. Thank you for joining me with this practice as we begin to start the recovery process. I shall bid you namaste.